Hello, my name is Nelly. This training covers immunization and TB risk assessment. Please note that this training is not comprehensive, and I'm sure you may have many questions later. Let's begin with immunization requirements. Please remind parents that this complies with California state law. It is our responsibility to ensure compliance. This poster can be displayed at the school front office and enrollment center. Hover over the causal to view the poster in your preferred language. In terms of school required immunizations, students need to have five doses of diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, four doses of polio, three doses of hepatitis B, two doses of measles, mom, rubella, two doses of varicella. This slide provides detailed information about school immunization requirements from K to 12 grade, including those requirements, instruction, and conditional admit and unconditional admission schedule. You can access this printout by hovering over to your left, clicking the link. This is the California Pre-K and School Immunization Record, commonly referred to as the blue card. Some parents may bring a yellow card, a doctor's immunization record printout, or out of state or out of country's immunization record. However, it is important to familiarize ourselves with this blue card. These are the four basic steps for processing immunization records. As for the child's immunization record, transfer dates for doses to a blue card or Infinix campus, determine if requirements are met can the student be admitted to school? Complete the status of requirements. Please note that since 2016, we cannot admit students with personal belief exemption according to Senate Bill 2771. If parents decline immunization for their child, please assist them with obtaining a medical exemption. Starting in 2021, all new medical exemption for school and child care entry must be issued through the California Immunization Regist Registry. Uh, it's called KME. Please note that medical exemptions can only be issued by MDs or DOs licensed in California. To obtain a medical exemption, Parents or guardians start by registering for a CareME account. The site will guide you through a quick and easy process. Please assist parents with the CareME website link and instruction upon request. Instruction for obtaining a medical exemptions are currently available in English and Spanish. For additional questions, this slide includes a hyperlink to the exemption FAQs. It is essential to determine which category students fall under and if they can attend school or not. There are six categories under which students can fall. For unconditional admissions, students have met all vaccination requirements and may attend school. For instance, students have received all required doses or have a permanent medical exemption for missing doses. This applies to alternative school programs such as independent study and IEP programs, as well as to students who do not receive classroom-based instruction and are not subject to these requirements. It is important that students receive services identified in their IEP regardless of their immunization status. Please maintain a blue card for these students with any immunization information they provided. For conditional admission, a student can attend school on the condition that remaining doses of vaccines are pending. For instance, a student may have a temporary medical exemption for missing doses due to cancer treatment or being immunocompromised. 
or they may be missing doses that are not yet due. Please ensure that students are not admitted to school if their vaccines are overdue. A grace period of 10 days can be given. If parents have an appointment for the vaccination, we can honor their commitment. When it's time to follow up, please fill out a notice of immunization needed letter and the required immunization for school form. Both printouts can be downloaded in multiple languages by hovering your mouse over the link and clicking on it. Please write in the uh, deadline date and mark the uh, missing vaccine. This slide is important for understanding special situations. For transfer students within the U.S., we can give parents 30 school days to bring the immunization records and a 10 school days deadline for the missing doses. This slides provide more detailed information about the transfer student which you may want to print out for future reference. Additionally, this slide provides more detailed information about students in foster care and those experiencing homelessness, which you may want to print out for your future reference. Here's uh, some additional special situations to consider, but you don't need to memorize them or know them right now. If you encounter any of these situations, please refer to the slide or contact your district nurse. This slide includes helpful website links for medical exemptions, school and child care roster lookup for looking up students' immunization records, and the immunization training from CDPH or shocks for school. Let's discuss tuberculosis requirements for school entry. Effective June 2014, students are required to have their health care provider complete the Santa Clara County Public Health Department risk assessment for school entry form before enrolling in school. Parents need to bring this risk assessment form to their provider who will complete it and return it to the student's homeschool. This requirement applies to all students enrolling in kindergarten or transferring from outside of Santa Clara County at any grade level. Now, let's review the tuberculosis risk assessment for school entry. This form provided by Santa Clara County must be completed by a licensed healthcare professional before school enrollment. This form is available via the hyperlink for your convenience. In terms of compliance with the TB risk assessment for school entry, the parents needs to bring a form from the healthcare provider with no answers to all three main questions. If the student has no TV symptoms, we can allow the student to attend with a grace period of 10 days for a future documented doctor's appointments or until a negative TV test result is obtained. This slide provides website links for parents to find resources for their child's TB assessment. Please note that TB risk assessment documentation is valid for up to 12 months before school registration. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the immunization and TB risk assessment requirements for school entry. Here's all my references. Thank you again.